Licensing Commissioners for Monday, August 10th, 2015. Um, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'm not going to mess up tonight. Of course. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to approval of minutes from July 13th. Uh, Madam Chair, motion to move to approve the minutes from our prior meeting. Second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, on to communications and announcements. Um, this first one is always one that we like the most. Um, and we will be swearing in new police officers this evening. Adrian um, Cuevas, I hope I said that correctly. Um, Officer Brandon James, Officer Michael Logan, and Officer Anthony, Anthony Sousa. And I will ask Madam Clerk. Officers that came out of the uh, Northern Essex uh, first graduating class in Lawrence and Methuen. Uh, Northern Essex just started their uh, academy. The area chiefs are in charge of it, which is great. Um, so it's a local academy, and these guys are the uh, first graduates of it. First, we have uh, Officer Adrian Cuevas. He's a decorated Army Staff Sergeant. He's been in Afghanistan campaign medals, and he has numerous ribbons and other medals in the NATO medal for uh, his actions during the uh, Iraq conf conflict and Afghan conflict. Uh, he's been fantastic with us in interpreting with uh, a Spanish population and uh, has gained their trust. So in the short couple of weeks he's been here, uh, it's been very, very good. And there's been a lot of translations. We thank you for that. Second, we have Brendan James. He's a master's degree in criminal justice. Again, he's well respected by his peers, and uh, his field training is going excellent. Michael Logan, he has his bachelor's degree in criminal justice. He's got glowing reviews from his field training officers, and he was the president of his graduating class at North Andover High School. Uh, Anthony Sousa has his bachelor's degree in criminal justice, and before he became, and he still is doing it, uh, he's a volunteer for a lot of North Andover sports and youth services. So we have a great bunch of uh, officers, and their, their dedication's been phenomenal. So, Madam Clerk. Such a pleasant experience. We're so happy to have you all here. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. Solemnly promise and affirm that I will faithfully, honestly, sincerely, and impartially perform all the duties that are incumbent upon me as a member of the North Andover Police Department. So help me God. Thank you. He asked me to put his badge on, so thank you so much, Sergeant.
Congratulations, Brandon. Congratulations. Thank you for your service. They never want to hang out. They never want to hang out. Thank you. You escaped. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You live one of the safest neighborhoods in town. Can you give up one of the tickets? He's a freaking white robot. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's one of the best, um, best parts of the job. Okay, we're going to be moving on to our library director, Kathleen Keenan, um, who will be talking to us this evening about the Million Minute Challenge. Having me. Andrew's not wearing his hat. I'm a little bit disappointed. <laughs> Just so you know, Andrew did get his hat first. One of the things for the library, of course, is literacy. We want to see people reading. We don't care whether it's a book and paper today or an audio book or an ebook. And so every summer our goal is to get people to be engaged with literacy, to be engaged with reading in some form. And we've worked with the school department for several years now to try and encourage things with the school. This year, the exciting thing was that the parents showed up and said, you're doing it, the school's doing it, what can we do? And we said, well, contests. People like contests, people like things with fun names. And that's how we came up with the Million Minute Challenge. We decided on a million minutes because we played lots of different math games. In the end, though, if we don't make a million minutes, we already feel like we won. 
because this is the first time we had the parents very actively supporting us through the PTOs with the schools. We have the curriculum coordinators, the reading specialists, and the school librarians all participating from starting in, you know, middle of May, talking in June, so that by the time we were ready to go, there were lots of plans in place. Hopefully lots of fun activities. If you haven't signed up to read, we would love you to sign up to read because although it's a, a big goal, we think it's actually achievable. If you do, divide a million minutes by an hour, it's 16,666.6666 River. And according to the census, there are 28,000 people in North Andover. So if everybody read for one hour between July 6th and August 22nd, we would have surpassed our goal already. We've asked the kids to record their hours because we want them to see the progress to have a tangible result. Whether they do that or not, we know they're reading. We see them in the library. We see them having fun. We see them leaving with books. So we invite you to come to the library. There's still at least a month worth of night activities there, uh, different kinds of programs. Tonight you're missing how to succeed on Craigslist. Yeah. We'll try to have things not always on Monday night, so maybe you can come too. But uh, thank you for the support that we feel for the library. We see it coming through the schools and we see it coming through the parents. Uh, we really feel like we've formed a real partnership. And uh, this year it's, it's really shown in how much activity there is. So thank you. It's true. My, no. I was going to ask you to remind us of the hours of the library and for people at home, too. <coughs> for the summertime, the library is open Monday through Friday. Monday through Thursday, we're open from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. And on Friday, we're open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We will be back on the summer, uh, the end of the summer hours. The first Saturday after Labor Day will be open seven days a week again. And I know that this um, million minute challenge, I know the kids are talking about it. My son's going in at seventh grade. I was actually in the library twice last week for I summer saw you reading. There. Yes. Um, and I know that the, the, the children are all talking about it. So I, I, I think it's great. Anything we can do to get the kids to read more. It's a struggle in middle school, especially. But anything to get them to do it is great. I think it's great. Thank you. Communication and announcements um, would be job posting and vacancy log. I mean, that's kind of new to the agenda. Do we want to go over that or just say that there are some positions available in town? I'm not sure how to handle that one. I think we'll, uh, if we can, we can uh, certainly, we, can, we moved it up from the agenda from what it typically appeared under the town manager's report under communications. And the intention is for the board to certainly read that as part of their packets. And if questions come up as relates to the positions posted, then more than happy to answer those questions. Okay. Move on to consent items. Can I just? Oh, I just have one oh yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, not quite sure this is where it should be, but I don't know where else to put it. Um, I was doing some work, um, looking up some things in other communities, and I noticed that another community had on their website that um, I th that was just really user friendly and customer service friendly to our residents. They had a website where if you had a pothole, you could log on email and say, gee, there's a pothole here, or graffiti, or my street light is out, and things like that. So it would be a nice form of communication to let you know town officials know, gee, we've got a problem here. And by email, it's a record. And um, so I thought perhaps, you know, with the um, support and aid of the town manager, we could maybe put something like this right on the website. They click on and say, you know. Well, we do have an uh, app. That, uh, right, he had said that. I use that pretty regularly. I mean, I've, had, I've seen street signs down, I've seen potholes, and I've used it pretty regularly. And it's, I, I don't know if there's an interface for the web for the uh, to get to that as well so they can log it. I mean, there's definitely an app on the phone, but I know everyone doesn't use phones. No, I, yeah. But I, it may have an interface on the web, I'm not sure. Well, I'm Why are we getting so much feedback? Have a interface we certainly can play something you know front and center on the website I think yeah. obviously folks come to the website to to get information or to provide some level of interaction so if it doesn't easily integrate or it's more difficult to find we we'll certainly will make it more prominent and if it doesn't exist in a way that residents can get on easily and fill out a form and let us know then we'll make sure we create some method you know as, as the board knows we're emphasizing technology in a heavy way and, and communication with our residents is most important so we'll look to see how it integrates today and make some enhancements to make sure it can be uh, used in a way that if someone isn't on the smartphone, they'll be able to 
provide us information that way as well. And maybe we should market the smartphone app a little bit more too. I know we have it on the website. I don't know if people even are aware we have it. But it's really nice because when you go to log something, we're getting a lot of feedback here. When you go to log something, it automatically marks your location, and then you can also upload a picture. So it gives a lot. Oh, I of didn't it. even I didn't realize that. Yeah, you can so you can attach a picture, and it marks your location. So it, you you know everything. A lot of the work is already done for you by just and then you just type in what the problem is. That's I think great. it's I think it's more fun to harass them personally. Okay. Well, or they can call Mr. Stewart and. I, I, call, <laughs> I, I, I call him all the time. The only calls I've gotten recently have been on, on um, um, the graffiti, which the yeah. police are diligently working to find the culprit. <clears throat> and I'm just hoping that the town will be diligently working to paint over it. Like, oh, well, no, no, no. When we, we find school. who's doing it, we're going to make them paint over it. Well, that too. But <laughs> I guess that, <laughs> that, that, that too. We'd like that. But right. <laughs> um, in particular, I think just the overpass. Because Laura, you've helped out some constituents. I know that I've gotten calls on my cell phone and just log right on. And, I think and it's the AC. Where it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's the AC. Thank you. Yes, no problem. I'll Great idea. And, I, and I'll provide some feedback as to any changes we make. Okay. The, um, I just want to comment one on the board's support uh, for advocating for the state to sort of increase its attention regarding Osgood Landing. I want to. Um, uh, thank the board for making that a priority, and I also want to uh, thank Secretary Ash, who came here last week, spent some time. I think it was a very valuable time for those people who attended. We invited a broad range of people, people that from a diverse perspectives, people from land use boards and legislators, and, and even the mayor of Lawrence, all of which showed up. We had a tremendous attendance, 25 plus people who came to listen to Secretary Ash. who did a tour of the site. Um, as he described the property, it's in play with the administration. They're going to focus on uh, trying to work with the, the owner of the property and prospective developers and tenants uh, throughout the Commonwealth and see if they can head them down uh, toward Osgood Landing as a way to, to uh, increase the amount of development on that site. Fantastic. So I want to thank Secretary Ash for coming and the board's support. Having attended the event, it was really, it was well done. Um, and. I'll tell you, Secretary Ash was really on his game and very attentive to the site. Um, said nice things about Andy. <laughs> I knew someone was going to call him. He called him Andy. We don't call him Andy, but, was, you know, but Secretary Ash called Old him Andy. Old habits die young. <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was it was a good meeting and good for the town. So hopefully something good will come of it. Proactivity. Great. Any other announcements from anyone on the? Okay, then moving on to consent items. Um, the first would be acceptance of a donation of weightlifting equipment from Greg Christie to be used at the new fire station. Madam Chair, I move that uh, the town of North Andover accept the generous gift of weightlifting equipment from, what's the name again, please? Greg Christie. Greg Christie, and uh, send a thank you note on behalf of the town. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I make one comment to this? Um, one, we first uh, greatly appreciate donations of the town in any way, and certainly donations in this regard are important. I think it's it's an opportunity, it's something the board raised uh, publicly at the time we received a similar donation, uh, not quite to this degree, some years ago. It's important for the residents sometimes to understand that we appreciate uh, the efforts by our staff, uh, especially public safety staff, to stay in shape and to work out. And, but it's always been the position of this board and from my office that the cost of that equipment come from donations and not come from the sort of core part of the taxpayer funded uh, buildings. And so we've historically reached out. We know that sometimes we ask our residents to do a lot, but uh, it's not uncommon in many communities and not uncommon at all in North Andover that we ask folks to donate this, uh, this type of equipment. So it's good for the residents to understand that. Um, because I think uh, sometimes it gets caught up in the discussion of what's in the bill to, mm -hmm. to build a mm -hmm. five plus million dollar uh, fire station. And we also appreciate the efforts of, of our residents who uh, know it's important to make these kind of donations. Um, that leads us directly into appointments. And, and I'm one who always says with, without the generosity of our residents and um, of, of not only tangible items such as this, but their time. Um, this community would grind to a screeching halt. Um, and that brings us to appointments of, of um, four more fantastic people who will be 
um, donating their time to this community. A good combination, actually. We have, we have four very talented women coming and joining different boards and committees that the subcommittee has met with over the past several weeks. Um, the first of which we have a woman named Regina Keene, who's a Mass Ave resident, um, younger mom who lives in town, who expressed an interest in several committees, and after picking her brain and finding you know, what, what her interests are, she really gravitated towards the planning board. And so um, our subcommittee recommends um, for the board's full approval that um, we move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Regina Keene to the planning board as an associate member for a term ending June 30th, 2017. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the next one was a woman named Maureen Ferris, um, lives off of Mass Ave, who um, she works for Phillips Academy and had a strong interest in joining the Youth and Recreation Council. I think it's worth mentioning. The three little boys. Oh, we've, we've met with quite a few people who have expressed an interest in this council. I mean, it's really fascinating the, the variety of people that have applied, the talent that they bring to the table. And Maureen really stood out as someone who would bring a lot of passion and I think analytical skill to this position and perhaps bring that, that council in a direction, um, not necessarily a new direction, but, but complement the existing direction and, and offer some new ideas as well. So I wanted to move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Maureen Ferris to the Youth and Recreation Council for a term ending June 30th, 2018. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And she's a great girl, too. She, she <laughs> absolutely is. Um, so the third was um, we met with a, a younger mom who lives on Davis. Um, her name is Nicole Pelletier. She had expressed an interest in joining. Again, what's great is that a lot of these people come to us and they say they have interest in these boards and then end up, you know, through the direction of us, um, they, they gravitate mean. towards the one that makes most sense. And so she is a younger mom who really likes the fact that she'd be able to have an early morning meeting and work on a site that she really has a lot of passion for. So um, the subcommittee recommended and, and asked the board to move that we appoint Nicole Pelletier to the Stevens Estate Board of Trustees for a term ending June 30th, 2018. Second. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Uh, um, the final one is that we've been we've been kind of scratching our heads to try and find an attorney to complement the Zoning Board of Appeals. We had an open associate member position, and so we had a young woman come in, young um, a young attorney named Alexandria Jacobs. She came, didn't even indicate ahead of time about the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, through a conversation, we found out that she would actually would be a perfect fit um, for her. And after reflecting and really reviewing and doing her due diligence. Uh, she seems really excited to join this board if we're so willing, and so Excellent. the subcommittee asks um, that the Board of Selectmen appoint Alexandria Jacobs to the Zoning Board as an associate member for a term ending June 30th, 2018. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Again, thank you um, to not only these four women, but to all of the volunteers in town. Because truly, I, when I say we would grind to a screeching halt, <laughs> we would. It could be boring to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Rosemary can attest to the fact that Phil has commented on. This was, over the last couple of weeks, a particularly um, exciting group of people to interview, or regardless of where they served. It, it um, hearing, yeah. refreshes your interest in, or energy on a number of different topics. These are folks who come willing to say, you know, why, you know, why have you decided to volunteer? Well, I was always wanted to give back to the town, and it's a really interesting, exciting, intelligent group, and um, very happy to see them have an opportunity and an opening to get involved. Yeah. It's fantastic. Come in with such a bright spirit and energy and really excited about serving. It's great. And edu I mean, educated and talented. It's I'm very lucky. It's been good. Super lucky. Speaking of very lucky, we also have an incredible, wonderful association here in town that gives back quite a bit as well. Um, so we are moving on now to the North End of Emergence Association, and they have a request before us to use the Town Common for the annual Fall Festival. This year it will be held on Saturday, September 26th from, um, we're looking to close, why don't you, you two want to come up? And, so. Thank you all for your time. So, um, as for last Don, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm sorry. Me. That's all right. <laughs> My name is Don Pease. I'm the new president of the North Andover Merchants Association. I took over on January 1st, so this is my first term. Um, last year, we hosted the Fall Festival on the Common for the very first time. 
we had not only wonderful weather, but we had an incredible turnout. We had so much interest and so many more people show up now that we were at a central location. So we're asking that this year that we be given permission to do the same again. The date of Feb uh, sorry, September 26th, um, and although here it says from 7 to 4, we would like to have an hour before and after for um, setup. It does take quite a while to get the lines and markings done, so we'd like to be able to do that a little bit earlier and to give people till about 5 o'clock to get off the common, to get all their stuff loaded up and off and for us to get the common cleaned back up. We also would ask um, that we close um, Mass Ave from um, the Academy Road to Osgood Street. We don't need to go all the way to the end of the traffic circle. By going to Academy Road, we give people that option to kind of sneak in and get around instead of it being completely blocked off. That worked very well last year. Great. Um, it went flawlessly last year, so we're hoping that uh, this year you'll give us permission to do the same. Super. So I'm looking for a motion. Um, um, yeah. All those in favor? Well, do we have to clarify the time? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we do need to move that the board of selectmen approve the request of the North End of Merchants Association to use the town common for their fall festival on Saturday, September 26th, from the hours of 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Right, um, and to close Massachusetts Ave from Ave from Osgood Street to Academy, Academy not Andover. Correct. Yep. From 8 a.m. to uh, from the time for the clo from closure. From 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Um, can I just mention one thing? Uh, if I remember last year, we actually did those markings the night before. We did the markings the night before, but, but we learned tags a lot, didn't we? With people coming in and being able to direct them, get them on and off as fast as possible, get the vehicles off. The sooner we can do that, the sooner we can get the vehicles off before the crowds begin. I mean, what I mean is, did you want to do them the night before, though, to make sure they're all marked for the morning? We, we, we marked all that. Did we need to, did we do yeah. permission for that the night before as well? Did we get permission for that? Or did I don't that? remember. <laughs> I think we just did it. I think you just <laughs> did Knowing it. that we had to, well, it was just getting that it's not it. Forget, it was just also putting one mark There's a walk that morning, and we have been in contact with them. Yes. We've also offered them a donation. Yes, I think um, it's going to play really well, actually. Yeah, I think they they seem very really eager well. to share it, to, that everything's going to be fine. St. Vincent de Paul, I don't want to walk for the poor is that I don't want to call it the wrong thing it. No, that's what that is St. Vincent de Paul walk for the poor I don't know if that but that's what they do yeah that's their function. I think it's going to play great need. right so then while we're here in case we didn't ask last year could we have permission the night before to put the markings on the ground yeah you good yay <laughs> oh we didn't vote yet all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, good luck. Thank you. Uh, the next is also a consent item for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation to use Drummond Park for their annual Great Strides, a walk to cure cystic fibrosis uh, for 2016, for Saturday, May 21st, 2016, from 9 to 3 p.m. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Move approval. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. Um, town manager will actually speak to E and F as we won't be taking action on those this evening. So item E on your agenda is the approval of uh, execution of order of taking for the Safe Routes to School project. Uh, item F is the approval and execution of documents related to the Bradstreet School development. Uh, what's known as a tripartite agreement, a First Amendment to the Land Development Agreement. Both are moving along. There's no but sometimes when we get into the process of, of requiring legal review, it takes a little longer than expected. So both of these items, we're not going to ask that you take action on this evening, but you should expect to see them at the next meeting. Um, I do have to say that in regards to the Bradstreet, there's been so many mixed emotions, and, and, and some people have been very sad, and others very, very happy. But I think over the next few years, um, we're all going to be very, very happy with, with, with what happens in, in that area. Moving forward, I am looking for a motion to move into licensing, please. Madam Chair, a motion that we move into licensing. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. We are in licensing. Okay, we're now in licensing. Would you like the gavel? No. <laughs> Okay, so first up in licensing, we have a number of requests from Small Arc Farms for um, some weddings and some uh, company parties. Uh, so let's see, do we want, how do we want to take these one at a time? I, I mean, I have a couple questions on the company parties given the times that they were scheduled on the, on the, uh, the request. 
Um, I think the weddings are all straightforward. There was a 10 o'clock one on a Sunday night, but that is on the holiday weekend, so that is okay. that has been approved by their license, so that's not outside the bounds. The ones I had questions on were the two regarding the corporate parties that were uh, requesting until 9 o'clock, but your license only goes till 7 for entertainment purposes. That I'm aware of, I don't handle that section of it. I just handle the alcohol side, um, and that's something that Smolak. I, I think the one for this two of them, there's um, Peabody. Peabody Plumbing and Crosby. That companies. is a um, that is a corporate trade show. It's very, it's actually pretty standard. It's like there's 20 about 20 booths. There's not there's no entertainment of any sort that I'm aware of. It's the second year that they're coming back. Um, and it's pretty low key, it really is. It's all plumbers, electricians that come through, get their details, and they we just have beer and wine for them. That's why it's it's a full festival. And it's actually pretty quiet. It's not no loud or anything. No yeah, not that I'm aware of. But um, you know But so just to be sure clear, it's nine o'clock on a weeknight during the schools um, you know, in schools in session. So you know, let's be very careful with that because that's something that. So, is a license for the alcohol stopping it? Are we allowed to go till nine o'clock? Well, if we grant the license for the alcohol till nine, okay. the entertainment license only goes till seven. So, if okay. you're playing music or anything like that, you have to stop it at seven. Is my okay. understanding. Yeah. yeah, you have to stop it at seven. Okay. But if we grant approval for the license till nine, then you can continue to serve alcohol until okay. nine. So. Uh, and that's the case for both. Okay, and then the other one is Crosby Company, which is a very conservative uh, financial organization out of Salem, New Hampshire, um, and they have to work the next day, so they're actually very low key. I had a really good talk with them because I, uh, with regards to the bar, what they wanted, um, and as far as I know, no one has said anything to me about that part, the entertainment section. That is something that Smolak and Ashley and Kelly they all handle that side of it. I handle the alcohol side, but I will definitely make note and let them be aware of this. I believe I did get an email today and I forwarded it off to them stating this was a part of their... See, I'd, I'd like to have confirmation that there's no entertainment that's going to be going out to 7 o'clock. Okay. I think that's something that we really, really need to have because the license only says 7 and I feel that if we're granting a, um, a liquor license till 9, it almost seems like we're giving that right to proceed until 9 o'clock. I think but when it comes to, especially regards to the noise ordinance, I think they are very you know, conservative in regards to that. They do listen to them. They do follow protocol. They never supersede any of the expectations that you've granted to us before. We've been by the books and everything that's given to us. Um, like I said, it's only a 65 person event. It's very small. It's under the tent. Um, as far as I know, they are um, aware of it. Okay. So we'll just give you a strong caution on the entertainment Absolutely. after 7. Absolutely. Um, what is the board's, do we want to take these individually or do we want to, are there any other questions from the board? No, other than as you've stated, we're depending that you will pass the word along so oh, that there's no confusion. I along today, and I, yeah. I will absolutely, when I'm done with the meeting, I will make so sure you'll list it, is. it. This is This is what it is, because we just we just don't want any problems. And yes, I, I agree with that. So. We don't either. I mean, we want the business to keep coming back because, right. I mean, it has been great. I mean, we've got a lot of events planned. Um, and we understand that we're not looking to respect. No, I respectful. I'm not saying that we're not saying that you are, but I think we just don't want to miss communication. And the next thing you know, um, we've got some people on this board mm -hmm. uh, disappointed. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so 7 p.m. for any kind of entertainment on both any events. Any music, yeah. That okay. Music has to stop at seven. Okay. That's that's the extent of your license. Okay. If you if you operate outside of that, you're violating your license. Okay, I will absolutely right. pass that along. As soon as I'm done with the meeting, I'll send an email right along with that. And if they need clarification, they could contact this board or, or um, absolutely our, the town clerk. She'd be happy to. Joyce, Joyce you would you like to speak on it? Put that as a condition on the license that the entertainment will cease at seven. And okay. So. Yeah, it, it is part of the license, though, but that, that's a good idea. We can put it and on both of these events are not till late September, so if there's any concerns or issues, I know that they can come and address it with you for the next meeting, I believe, before the events, right. if there's any con con concerns on that. I really, I don't have anything to do with that, and I apologize. Um, so you're just your correct? Yes, I'm, I own butlers and bars, so I come and I just do the alcohol side of it, and that's what I do. I handle that part of it. Um, but I... You know, I do take responsibility of what does transpire when I'm on site, even if it has nothing to do with me. 
I'm I try sure to. Michael's read his license, which is <laughs> sure. <laughs> anyway, okay. Absolutely. You? Good. It's a school night. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so would we like to, um, okay, I'm sorry, Tracy. I was just going to say move that the Board of Selectmen acting as licensing commissioners approve the 10 one-day all-alcohol licenses for events at Smolak Farm as presented. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You're all set. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, next we have Merrimack College, a one-day all-alcohol license for new faculty reception on Wednesday, August 26, 2015 at the Rogers Center from 5 to 9 p.m. Do we have anybody from Merrimack here? No? Okay. Uh, it looks like all the paperwork is in order. All of the boards and the police and fire have all um, sent positive uh, recommendations. Do I have a motion? Second. Any for, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Merrimack is all set. Um, St. Gregory Armenian Church requests a one-day wine and malt license for their annual picnic on Sunday, September 13th, 2015, from 12 to 6. And they're also asking to waive the fee for that license since it's a, uh, a church and a charity. Um, so um, do we have a motion? And I think, again, all the paperwork was in and in order, and uh, police and fire and building have all approved. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Does that include uh, um, for waiving the fees as yeah, well? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. They're all set. The last one is Dicor. Am I saying that right? Dicor Restaurant. Uh, application for a wine and malt res um, restaurant license. Um, would you guys like to come up and tell us about it? Can I just say before they start that you guys are a huge hit in town? Everybody is talking about you. Everybody. Yeah. Bravo, bravo. Thanks for having us. My name is Jessica Velez, and I'm the one who's applying for the liquor and malt license, the wine and malt wine license. And malt. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been there about eight weeks. Two months. About, and we are an Argentinian and Italian restaurant. We just built an outside patio that's been with a high fence to make sure there's no issues with that. And we're just requesting a license. We do a lot of meats and stuff, so we figured what better wine, meats, Argentinian food kind of go hand in hand. Um, and so you've got a patio with a fence around it? Yeah. yeah. And the fence has no gates, you know, you know, you have to go through the restaurant. Yep. To get into well, you kind of come in and through the side. There's like a little walkway, but you can see it through, like you can literally see it right. The restaurant is small, so anywhere you are in the restaurant, and we would have a waitress inside and outside. outside, so it would be, someone would be out there at all times, so nothing would be going Coming wrong, in. or nobody can give drinks away, or none of that. Okay. Um, and we would actually put, we're in the process of putting like a chain through it yeah. so they can't go in and out. Go in, go in and out unless the chain's open. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I see, yeah, so it's right adjacent to the front door. That's about three tables. Big, huge patio. Nothing. Yeah, the fence is uh, five, five feet tall. Just a question, how do you get to the patio? It's told where the front door is, yes. right when you walk out the front door. There's a little... Like, so, oh, I see. Right, just, just, just right inside. Like just prior to the entrance. Right. Yep. right so it's right. right outside the door. So you can see it right through your windows. Too. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's, you can, like, even from my kitchen, you can see because it's all an open concept, right. so you can see outside. You can see the tables and the chairs and the people actually sitting out there. So the waitress so, taking an order will exit, refer to as a it's fence? Literally, then, so if this is the door, she's literally going. So she's leaving she, the fenced area and walking in the entrance? Walking in the entrance. Mm-hmm. When we have an outdoor seating, the people handing or passing liquor yeah. over the thing to, you know, but right. you know, it's good that you have a fence that uh, covers that area, and you know, you've got limited access to that, and right. you have to go through the front door. 
So, um, well, I guess we're going to have a waitress, that, like one waitress for outside and one waitress for inside, so we will have someone, someone out there at all times. Yeah. What's the fence though? It's uh, five, five feet, feet tall, and it's all, it's one big fence. There's no it space, and it's a solid. Mm, no. Uh, no, no, it's not got solid. like the bars, bars on it oh. in between. Five feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. My only concern is being able to get it out, get it in the same as everywhere else in town. Over the fence and out of the fence, that's all. Different, no, I actually can't, same kind of entrance. I'm thinking BFW. Same kind of entrance. When they do these fences, but I'm just. Well, that's kind of what I just asked, too. What was the question? I'm sorry. When did they get the outside? Okay. The building inspector. Yeah, and have seating outside. Yeah, and he yeah. said it was fine. You can do it. That's not. That's why we went ahead and did it because he said it was okay to do it. That's fine. Okay. Okay. They raised the question. Yeah. Should we go out and build a patio? Yeah. And it's linked to whether or not they get the alcohol. In this case, the patio is there. Now they want to add the alcohol. So. has inspected it since it's been erected yeah. because there's, we've always been kind of concerned too that if it's so fenced in how do people get out in a fire so this it's well, easy they have a good amount they have an entrance at the door right right yeah right yeah it's right, it's right outside, it's right outside. Right. but if he's in, if he's inspected i have faith that yeah he's i actually out. have a picture so if you that would be great see, you see the picture. yeah because you have a more detailed well, picture yeah, so one of the recommendations, or not, it's not even a recommendation, it's a requirement from the police that your service be TIP certified and go through the TIP course, okay. right? Um, so are you planning to do that or have your... your you get 45 days. You go to a class to learn how to serve alcohol, how to tell if someone's had too much to drink. You, know, okay. you just learn... Like check IDs and all that. Yes. Right. Um, and, and tell if someone's been served, over-served. Um, she could probably give you all the <laughs> So does the police recommend that all service em employed by oh, okay. Everybody. You can or you can have a consultant come on site. It's $35 a person. You can train the whole staff. It's worth the even the owners. It's the best way to do it. Okay. Awesome. We'll write that down. So we would recommend, highly recommend that okay. your service all be TIP certified to okay. recognize. Perfect. I think it's a requirement. Right? Yeah, I think you said it was required, right? Yeah, so what did that well, it's really actually for your protection as well. I mean, yeah. if, if you overserve or somebody comes in and you don't realize, gee, they've been partying before they get here and you're serving and they go out crossing that very dangerous street, you're going to be held responsible. And we do take our liquor licenses pretty seriously. So it's just, it's really to your benefit. Um, some uh, establishments, I don't know if yours is big enough yet for the amount of alcohol that you're serving, actually get a machine to do check for ID. Um, we are a college community. There's a lot of out-of-state IDs, so we just be very, very clear. If somebody gives you an out-of-state ID, you cannot use that as a form of ID. You can use it, but you do it at your own risk. Um, if it passes through the machine, it's an out-of-state ID, and you have a, uh, a good machine and it passes, the board would probably, you know, uh, you know, reprimand, but probably um, be a little bit more understanding. Uh, but it's a little bit confusing. Somebody gives you an ID from New Jersey, and it pictures on it all looks good. It's not an acceptable form of ID in the state of Massachusetts for, for liquor. Again, you can use it. But if it doesn't go well, it won't go well for you. So. We take it very seriously, the um, offenses. So, um, you know, we would be coming before us again, but not in a, a good way. So, <laughs> so you don't want you don't want that to happen. So you need to be very very careful on who you serve and how you serve your liquor. Um, yeah, we totally want to call yeah, we, yeah, we give you the stern talk now. So fair warning. Yeah. But, but having said that, we wish you great success. Thank We're here on wonderful you. things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. The Board of Selection acting as licensing commissioners approve a wine and malt restaurant license for Dicor Restaurant. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Col Colgero, you look like you have something on your mind, no? Nothing. I mean, 
I assume that whoever you've been insured by have, has explained to you the benefits of having oh, yeah. all your employees yeah. be TIP yeah. certified. And that you, it's an online course where you actually can't get a question wrong. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, not, it's not subject, it's a fact. You actually yeah. can't get a question wrong. Right. So, anyway. Yeah, yes. um, so, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other comments? Further comments? I'd like to know what your specialty is. For the Argentinian. So we specialize a lot in the Argentinian. Like, what would be. Like so uh, we do a lot of meat, so the short ribs, the steak, the meat. Oh, so a lot of the meat, the Argentinian yeah. meats, yeah. We thought we were going to work a lot with the Italian food, but the Italian menu. Have they but joined yet? Everybody that has okay. been coming in, it's all Argentinian, Argentinian. We just had national night the other night. We were yeah. there. Yeah. 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 yeah, and everybody was like, do you have Argentinian food? You know, we brought a lot of pasta and stuff, so it's hard to bring all that. All the meats and the steaks, and yeah. all, you know, but. And you should also make sure that you look into the North End of a Merchants Association that is here this evening as well. Um, it's an it's it's a really great organization um, that that brings all of the merchants. It's it's merchants, but it's all the restaurants, it's all the stores, it's different businesses um, together as 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 you know as their own community within the community. And they um, there's a lot of opportunities for marketing and and different events and and actually philanthropy uh, to give back to the community as well too. Are we North having a uh, North End of a Merchants Association? That was partly what you were at the other night. Yeah, they were yeah. one of the major sponsors. Are we having a restaurant week this week? This I don't year? think so, no. No, this week, this, this week. year. Yeah. Okay, so I've already said we have a motion and a second. I'm not going to ask for further comments. I think everyone had their say. So all those in favor? Uh, uh, good okay, luck. You're all Thank set. you so much. Okay, and that was the last thing we had on the agenda for licensing. So I'll hear a motion to move out of license. Motion to move out of licensing. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right, we'll be back to you. We're out of licensing. No old business, no new business. Any public comment? Public comment here. Right here. You have a public comment? Oh, yes, this is beautiful. No, boy. This is beautiful. Okay. Can so you go to the podium? Or are you going to do it from your No, seat? no, I can do it from here. Can you state your name? As, as, as you know, we passed a stop sign. Yeah. Okay? And when they put the stop sign in, I went up to check on it. Ladies. Ladies, we're still in the middle of a meeting. Sorry, you can take it off. You can go out in the hall. Charlie, use that hall, that room right there, if you want to have a meeting. Thank you, though. I went up to check on it, and I seen cars flying through the stop sign. So then I go to get a traffic officer and, and tell him we had a problem because nobody knew the stop sign was there. So the traffic officer went up and got the sign that was for the National Light Out and brought it down. At that time, he told me, he says. Nobody ever approached me on this. Since 1991, I've been racking my brain. All that stuff goes through the traffic officer. What, what stuff sure got this through? Oh, I, I want to just say that I know that that sign was there prior to National Night Out because I went to that stop sign and I saw the, the um, sign indicating that there was a stop sign there now. They, they, it, was, it was a bump sign. No, 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 it, we, what, what's that? I'm by myself. It was a bump sign and there's another sign there and nobody knew the change of sign. They, they, weren't, they weren't well coordinated on changing a sign. Well, I, I can tell you when the sign was installed. The night before the sign was installed, the Fairville message board was placed on the street where the sign was installed. There happened to be a detail officer at the same corner the first full day that it was installed, because I went past him in the morning. He was not, wasn't working on the stop sign. He was working on the trench work that was there. Yeah. Um, there clearly are some limbs that, that as you approach it, one, you know, we have to change people's habits and used to not seeing it, I, I get that. Uh, but there was both a variable message board that was left for several days afterwards, and there happened to be a, a, a uh, detail working on the trench signs. Yeah. So clearly we have to change some habits, but th there was, because we all uh, got some calls that morning, uh, that message board went out the night, the night the sign was installed. People were just I not seeing it. The message board was taken down from the high school during the day. I can tell you it was, it was there so for I'm the first several. I, I, Mr. Valancourt called me. Yeah. I went down myself. He went down himself. The message board was in place, and I checked with Bruce that it had been put in the night before the stop sign was installed. I went by it myself. I, I, now, I was aware of what I wanted to see. I understand that. But the message board said, please proceed with caution. New stop sign installed. And it was about 100 feet before the stop sign. Yeah. But we, we recognize. My, my main point is, sure. my main point is, under recalling all the way back in 91, when 
evidence of traffic change, a sign, it's, it's looked at by the safety officer. And he says, Don, there's never been an incident that street. Now, if somebody gets hit with a stop sign there, they're going to say, Where, where's your paperwork from poor? Why did you change it? You've got nothing to stand on. And, and I can tell you that stop sign came off the weeks of consultation with the police department and came with the recommendation and support of the police department. It was not arbitrary. It wasn't about someone saying, I can address and will address the miscommunication if there has been some in the police department. But Mr. Thibodeau recommended that after meeting with the police department and discussing traffic patterns. It wasn't arbitrary. It wasn't as if, I mean, because it is complicated down there. Three signs, four signs, it's two more signs. more complicated now. And that can it's be addressed even, by the it's board. It's getting more complicated because people don't know. I that street doesn't belong to the town. Really that street happen. belongs to that, that developer. Well, I, I, I agree with Mr. Mailer. We, the there is a... One part of the street that doesn't belong to the town. It's a private way. What is? What are we talking about? From, from, from the stop sign down all the way down to Prescott Street, that was owned by Davidson Furbo. Now, was that changed over in the deed? I don't know. For what, what are we talking about? The stop sign or something? So the, the whole street. The street. High Street is what The whole street. I'm, but, I'm not aware of that. You know? But that's right. That's right. Some, some old timers told me that. You know, we have other I'm towns. An too, we so. have a combination of towns. There certainly are some streets yeah. and towns that are still called private ways, but we include them. I know it's on our list for, for getting Chapter 90 money. Well, I, I think what the main thing is, I think, from this, this fall, we got to have a policy of having the safety officer look at this stuff or just wing it as we go along. And, I, and I'm telling you, the police department, the, the, this recommendation came with the police department's endorsement. Mr. Thibodeau didn't bring it to this board or bring it to me until the police endorsed that. Again, I can speak to the police chief to find out what his process was internally, but this didn't come in a vacuum from, from the DPW director or from someone else. It came in consultation with the police department. Right. I, I recall when we approved it, it was from a letter from the chief requesting... Well, I was from the DPW, and he said, CC I chief. talked to the chief about it. That's all he said. No, there was more than that. There was, I, I, can, I, I can tell you there was a lot of conversation about this very issue including engineering folks, meaning from traffic engineering folks, the police department and from Mr. Thibodeau. It was not done on an island by Mr. Thibodeau. It was done in consultation with the police department. I will address whether or not how that communicated inside the police department, but I can tell you that it absolutely came with their endorsement. More dangerous now than it was before. Well, but that's a different thing. If the board feels like they want to alter it, that, that's fine. Oh, I, I'm I wish there just wasn't a hill there so it could be a four way. <laughs> it can't be four way. You will make the hill. Because then the, the water person, street, the, you just, it doesn't matter where the that person is. Coming You're up out the in the middle before you the can see The person coming up the hill is stopping now on their own. It's like, okay. Yeah, I, I don't it's know. Ago. It's a horrible intersection. Just going on the way. But. So would the board like to have it reevaluated? How would the board like to proceed? I, I, a time period to see if people adjust. It, they also put up the orange flags. Months. We made it which, four months. Remember, it's a four-month yeah. trial. I think the bigger issue, really, honestly, it, it, I, get, I can see why people are still flying through it. I mean, they did it down at Joe's, too, in the, in the beginning, and now it's fantastic. The library, the library they flew through it's it in the beginning. Now it's fantastic. I mean, you know, when we do it, it ends up in the long run being being great. The issue I see there is a it's three ways, which throws people it's off. To and coming down water, you're halfway in the middle of the street before you can even look to the left. That's what that's what's always concerned me is the the the, the um, sight line. Well, that's what we did discuss that about trimming some of the trees because as you're coming down Elm Street, there is a there's a if you're about. 200 yards up Elm Street or so, you, you, there is a, because of the grade and the trees, you don't see the stop sign mm -hmm. until you're about 100 yards or so. There's still no, but I mean clear. coming out of water, I'm in the middle of Elm to take a look down the le down high to even take a left because of the way that building comes out farther than the road does. The stop sign seems so, to I mean, be a lot more more Only because you can't go to the middle of the guy's driveway. The thing that's awkward about it is people approach it where you don't have the stop sign and they slow down because they see everybody else slowing down. And then you've got the guy that's or the bad. woman behind him. No, but then you get the person behind him who thinks they're going to go zipping through. Um, well, I think we revisit as we said we would revisit. Yeah. I haven't gotten a lot of complaints. I don't know about anyone. The first day. The first, yeah, well, the, the first, first couple day. days. Seven, sure. July 30th. Well, I think we all went, ooh. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, one of the things in the longer term, and I know this is sometimes the longer term isn't, isn't great, I think there's some expectation for redesigning, because that intersection itself is just off, right? So yeah. it's not a T, it's, it's cool. off. You have the hill, you have the grade. So uh, there's been some discussion that there may need to be a reinvestment because the amount of traffic there is. Well, we hope so. it ticks, it continues to tick up too. I mean, with, I want to say a lot of traffic done. More. Okay. Any other public comment? No? That's it? If you like tip certification, I'll come around. No, I'll People come around. People admit what it's all about. And we'll all agree with I'll, you. I'll, I'll, yes. <laughs> Moving on to the town manager's report. Any ask right. the managers. <laughs> Bill Gordon has an email to anything in? No. I'll get you bricks. Our next meeting day will be Monday, August 31st. And uh, we might be setting a record this evening for 55 minutes. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is that it? Anything else? That's all I have. I, you, you don't have anything to do? Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to look for the stop sign. Uh, the gender right <laughs> do I have a second? Did I miss it? Uh, June 1st, yeah. I'm looking at it, too. I'm looking at the executive it's summary, it's too. It's just, it's We're not still, adjourning? It's just We're still talking? It's just a Bruce Thibodeau that mentions the police department is in favor of the four-month trial. I have a Four-month trial. I think I think the police. Um, I think what Don might be alluding to is that when we come back to revisit this in four months, the police may have a different opinion. Okay. That's yeah, all. When, when was it? It was just installed last week. Yeah. yeah. It was July thirtieth. July thirtieth. I mean, I noticed it this week. So end of November, we'll be, re you know, and that that gives us some weather change. That gives us some. Stop right speed straight bumps, through. Speed bumps just before the stop sign. Uh, yeah, speed bumps. That's it. The speed bumps. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? <laughs> second. All those in favor. All right. All right.